All right, so let's uh, get started with the second part of uh, today's lecture, where we will be talking about semantics or meaning of uh, propositional sentences. And uh, this discussion is pretty important because um, once you get to know what does a sentence mean, and many, many things become very easy and things that look like they're quite difficult uh, become very accessible. And propositional logic has a very nice and simple semantics, uh, but it has to, uh, and, and you may have been exposed to it a little bit, but maybe with a different emphasis that what we're gonna do. Uh, so let's do that. So uh, as I mentioned before, one way to think about um, semantics as giving us uh, a way to formally define what you may wanna call, uh, you know, properties of sentences, um, and then relationships between these sentences. So if you want to look at properties uh, of logical sentences, and, and when we say here, by the way, is sentence, it's the same as a knowledge base, uh, because a knowledge base, which is a whole collection of sentences, can just be viewed as uh, one sentence, which is made up by ending or conjoining everything. So whatever we're going to say here about a sentence, even if it's small, it's the same thing that you would say about a knowledge base. Uh, the two key main properties we're going to look at is what's known as consistency and validity. Is a sentence consistent? Is it uh, valid? And uh, let me see. And then in terms of relationships, which tie two particular sentences, here you can talk about equivalence. Are two sentences or knowledge bases saying the same thing? Um, you have what we would call entailment. It's like implication. Then you have mutual exclusiveness and so on. All right, and uh, those are things we use all the time in, in even natural discourse. Uh, but they have very specific definitions when we come to logic. And the, the central notion of semantics ties around something very simple. Uh, and that is uh, whether uh, a particular sentence holds at a word. So what does that mean? Uh, look at the table here that we have on the side uh, that I decorated with these uh, red things to emphasize its importance and to make sure I don't delete it because we're going to use it uh, quite a bit in what's coming up next. What's happening here is we do have a situation and we're going to use it to illustrate the key notions. Uh, we have three, just three Boolean variables. And this corresponds to this example where we said, you know, this represents an earthquake, a burglary, an alarm. Now, the thing that you have to realize, the minute that you uh, define your Boolean variables, what you have really done is uh, made a commitment to how you're going to see the world in the sense that if you have three variables and each one of them is binary, could be uh, on or off, then you really ha have eight possibilities. And we call these worlds. Right, so each one of these guys is called a world. In, in a way, one way the world could be. And you may have heard, uh, you know, the term truth assignment uh, as being used for these guys. And uh, maybe variable assignment as well. Okay, so we'll typically use a world or a possible world. Now, three variables, Eight possible worlds in general, n variables, two to the n possible worlds, assuming things are binary. Towards the end, we're gonna also talk about multivalued variables, uh, which when we talk about things like uh, capturing the behavior of random forests and so on, um, but similar story. Now, the, the central notion is whether a sentence alpha holds at world W, uh, and that has a specific notation that's written like this, all right? And it's also read in uh, so many other ways. Uh, we would say in this case, W satisfies uh, alpha, right? Or W 
entails alpha and uh, so on. Now, the definition is very simple. If I give you a sentence, let's say alpha, and this alpha happens to be not E or B, right? And um, let's pick word three in this case, right? If you wanna tell whether that particular sentence hold at that world, it's simply a matter of substitution. Now, what is word three doing? Word three is saying that E equals uh, true if you wanna think about it that way and b equals false and then a equals um, true right so true false true true false true and if you really literally want to check whether this holds or not you just do substitute the values you're going to say not a true or false and then evaluate that expression uh, this is basically false or false which is false so in this case uh, we would write W3 does not entail alpha. All right. Um, okay, now this looks very trivial. And now you're going to see how this is going to get pretty interesting. But I just wanted to make sure that we are clear on what does it mean for a sentence to be true at a particular world. The first thing you have to realize, it's, it's easy to tell. You can actually check that in linear time through a, a matter of simple uh, substitution. And um, now we get to what we're gonna do with this uh, notion. So I'm gonna erase this particular part here. Let me do this. Now, now that we have this notion, look what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna first take a, some very quick examples and then um, use this notion in a um, number of ways. Uh, very quickly for you here is W1, does it imply, does it entail B, W3 entails, not B, W4 entails uh, B or E, right? So these are basically quick example. Uh, B in W1 is true, so this makes sense. If you look at W3, B is false, this makes sense. If you look at W4, uh, it says I need either B to be true or E to, or e to be false. Uh, e, sorry, E to be true, and it is. So all of these guys actually uh, hold. Now, what we want to look at is the following. And this is a central definition here, which is the models of a sentence alpha, which is the set of worlds at which it is true. So you go to the set of walls and see which ones make alpha true and you put them in a set. Now, these are called the models of alpha. And they also happen to be what, what you may want to call the meaning of alpha. Um, in a sense, that when you go and assert the statement alpha, you're effectively saying only those models of alpha are possible and you're eliminating uh, everything that does not satisfy alpha, you're throwing it out, you're eliminating possibilities. So in a sense, knowledge of alpha throws out every possible world that does not satisfy alpha. And that's basically the, the, the role of knowledge here is in terms of constraints, it narrows down possibilities. We're going to take a quick look at some examples, but before we do that, you have to realize that this mods function, which map a sentence to its meaning or to the set of possible world, has uh, some properties, and maybe you guys can help me with that. Let's uh, try to see here. So I'm going to write the mods of alpha and beta, and I'm going to put here mods alpha and mods beta. So the idea is if you give me a compound sentence, a conjunction, alpha and beta, and I want to compute its models, the worlds at which it's true, but I have only those worlds at which alpha is true and those at which beta is true. Can someone talk to the chat box? How should I combine these two guys? How should I combine these two guys here? Okay. Now, some people wrote intersection and, okay, a lot of people are writing intersection and uh, that's basically it. You can take the uh, intersection of these two guys. Okay, some people are saying conjunction. 
Now, conjunction is applies to sentences. This is a set. We literally we cannot do conjunction on these. Actually, before I do the other properties, let me let me show you a concrete example. So, if you look at here, the mods of E, and I want to put a set here. Uh, I'm going to write the first one. David, you won. Can someone type the numbers of the other guys? What are the worlds that will make it true? Okay, the other guys are two, three, four. So W1, W2, W3, W4. Okay, now you can visualize it. You see, it is, mods is actually a set. Now, let me go to the second one. If we do mods of alpha or beta. So I'm looking at this junction and I only have the mods of alpha and the mods of uh, beta. Uh, what should I put here in between these guys? How should I combine the models of alpha and the models of beta to get the models of alpha or beta? And people are saying the union, which is correct. And that's basically what's, what's going on. Okay, uh, one last one. Uh, the mods of not alpha and I have the mods of alpha. What do I do to that to get to the mods of not alpha? Uh, people are saying complement. Indeed, if you just take the complement of that, um, then you're basically good. Okay, remember these guys. In fact, it's interesting because th these guys allow you to, when we look at now the definitions of things like consistency, validity, and equivalence, and entailment, and all of that, you can write a program in a few lines, um, something in a, in a language like Python or so on, that, that can do this kind of reasoning using these equations uh, very easy. I mean, okay, it's not going to be very efficient. Uh, it will be exponential in the number of variables, but still you can do things like up to three, 30 variables, uh, logical reasoning very, very easily with these equations. Now, if you uh, look at, um, quickly, just to take an example before we go to the definitions of the notions that we want, if you look at a statement like E or, so alpha here is uh, earthquake or burglary implies alarm, and you want to get the meaning of this. Again, when someone said an earthquake or burglary implies alarm, what did they really say? What did they really do? As we explained, what they did is they threw out some of these eight possibilities. And which one of these eight possibilities were thrown, we'll have to look at the models for this guy. And if we're going to use these guys, what you can say is, remember what we said about that this is the same as not E or B or A, right? So we got rid of that connective. And if we want to actually use these guys, right? And I'm trying to compute the mods of alpha or the models of alpha using these guys, what we'll end up doing is uh, mods of E union uh, mods of B. And then I can complement that. Okay, that wasn't good. Okay, and then that's the union of mods. Okay, look how simple it is. So this is the mods of alpha. So if you really know the mods of every variable, which is pretty easy to do, you're done. You can just use union and um, conjunctions, uh, union and intersection and complement to compute the models of any sentence. And if you do it in this particular case for this guy, uh, I think what you're going to get, I'm just going to write the numbers. Uh, so these would be 1, 3, 5, 7, and 8. Now, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what this sentence have done, when you said that earthquake or burglary implies alarm, you threw out three possibilities. Uh, world 2, 4, and 6, uh, you basically just told me uh, that they are impossible. So in this case, it would be this guy here, and it would be this guy here, and then it would be that guy here. You're saying those cannot be. 
the more you add to your knowledge base, uh, if, if the information that you added it was new or added something that it will keep knocking out some of these uh, possibilities, all right? And uh, this is one of the roles we're gonna see later when learning from data and knowledge because what knowledge does is tell you certain things are not possible. And sometimes you need to, to have a lot of data to make that conclusion, right? Because when you're not seeing certain things, uh, is it because they're unlikely or is it because you're unlucky or be, is it because they just violate some domain constraints uh, and some knowledge that you know? And, and the, the, the short story about learning from data and knowledge is that if you have knowledge and you know how to use it, then you'll need much less data in, in, in general. Um, and that could be uh, quite useful in some cases. Okay, so guys, now we're ready to go and tackle uh, semantics as far as giving the definitions of notions that we want and those we will have to do together and uh, we will do them and then we'll get to see some rewards. And just before I do that, let me answer a question. Someone said, we use this symbol, we use this guy and that guy we wrote W alpha and this here was a world and this was a sentence and the meaning of this was W entails um, alpha or satisfies alpha and so on. Someone said they sometimes see the following symbol instead. There's only one guy here, right? Instead of two, what does that mean? Um, that actually means something else. It's, it says derives. So if you put here a sentence alpha and beta, you basically saying, I can derive beta from alpha. Now, the notion of derive is usually a function of things called inference rules. So this is not as meaningful without you telling me what inference rules are you using to do the derivation, okay? Um, this becomes more relevant when you're doing inference using um, inference rules. It's not as relevant to what we're gonna say at least today, maybe when we talk about resolution, which is an inference rule next time, we can put it in a, in a better context. But for now, you can just leave this thing out and you're gonna see that this guy is overloaded. In fact, in just a second, you're gonna see that we're gonna use it in other contexts. Uh, so I hope this answered that particular question. Okay, let's go and get moving guys before we lose our steam here on uh, properties and relations between sentences. And here you need to help me out. So in terms of uh, properties first, um, and we said we're gonna look at two of them. And the first one is consistency. So it simply is alpha consistent. Now, I want you to think about it first intuitively because you give me the definition. And everything you give me, give me here in terms of definition will be using the mods function. So I'm gonna give you a number of notions and say, what do they mean? So is alpha consistent? Uh, basically it means if you wanna think about it, natural language doesn't make sense. Is it making sense? Is it even whatever it's saying is possible? Is it uh, coherent? Uh, what do you guys suggest for a definition? in terms of the mods relation. Uh, when would I say that a sentence is consistent? Or you may even wanna think about it the other way around. Like when is a sentence inconsistent, incoherent? Uh, okay, someone saying no empty set of worlds means consistent. Uh, very good. And someone saying that something is inconsistent when uh, it's empty. Okay. so if you do not want a sentence to eliminate every possible world, right? We, we know some of these worlds must be possible. So a sentence, if a sentence end up uh, eliminating everything, that is basically inconsistent. And as I'm speaking, people are typing in uh, other things. They phrasing it differently. When there exists a world that satisfies alpha, perfect. Here's what we're gonna use. We're gonna say mods of alpha is not the empty set. Okay, uh, so you guys phrase this in so many different ways. And now valid. 
Now, valid is a little bit of a tricky uh, notion, but I will make it uh, simple on you. Um, valid, people also sometimes use tautology. You know, like someone says something and you say, oh yeah, I mean, that's always true. I mean, you haven't said anything. I mean, so, so a tautology or um, technically people use valid. Um, what do you guys suggest? Think about it this way. Someone wrote a sentence for you. I said, here's what I know. And you look at it and you say, well, apparently you don't know anything because this is obvious. Uh, okay. I, I do have a, a phrasing of that, which is clever, but I want a more direct one. Okay, so people saying when alpha is true uh, for all worlds. So this is mods of alpha is the set of all worlds. So we're going to use this for the set of all worlds. Now, think about it. Why is it a tautology? And why would when someone write a sentence that's valid, you're like, okay, you didn't say much. It did not eliminate any possibilities, right? When it's true at every possible world, then that's not helping you. That is not throwing out any possibilities uh, of the world of the possible world. So uh, people wrote it in other ways. And, and in fact, the way they wrote it, um, so I'm going to read one of them. Its complement is empty. Um, let me read another one. The complement of the set of worlds is empty. Some of these phrasing that talk about the, the um, complement are actually trying to re relate these two guys. So help me out here. Let me write something here. So we will say alpha is valid if and only if I want you to write something here that uses consistency so that we can tie these notions. And, and that goes with some of what you guys did uh, in the chat box, what, what you wrote in there. So uh, you need to give me two things here. I'm gonna put them here, a component here and a component here and in the middle uh, is. Let me see what people uh, wrote. So someone wrote when not alpha is inconsistent. Okay, so this is one of the, uh, so I'm, I'm getting a whole bunch of these, but one of them is alpha is valid if uh, not alpha is inconsistent. Uh, let's take a vote. Uh, you know, how many people support this? So yes, so just type yes to the, to the um, so either vote yes or no. I mean, either yes or no. If, if you buy it, say yes. If you don't buy it, say no. Okay, I'm getting uh, so far an overwhelming yes. There was only a couple of no's so far. Let's do a Venn diagram, which usually uh, basically clarifies these things. This is uh, what we have. Right, it's the set of all worlds. If you wanna, well, actually let's make it a square. So if we have this guy here and I have, uh, this is alpha. So let's say these are the models of alpha, all right? Now, what does it mean for me? A and what's outside here? The models of not alpha, correct? So inside the circle are the models of alpha and the complement is the models of not alpha. When I wanted something to be valid, I wanted to occupy everything. I wanted it to have the whole thing, right? So that was this guy here. Uh, another way is to make a condition on this guy. What do I want this guy to be? I wanted to have no models, right? If, if this guy had no models, then all of them are going to alpha. So if, if th this guy has no models by saying not alpha is inconsistent, which is mods of not alpha equals empty. Okay, now you can see the beauty of what we showed earlier. I can write this as mods of alpha complement, correct? So what does that mean? Okay, we show the equivalence. So even though it was done intuitively here, the relationship between validity and, and consistency, uh, these three equations that, I, that we gave about manipulating mods can be used to actually prove things. So you can use them and, and using simple set operations 
to effectively uh, prove that alpha is valid if and only if not alpha is inconsistent. Now, when we walked into this lecture, if I were to start and tell you, how many of you can prove to me formally that if a sentence is a tautology, then it is uh, negation is uh, inconsistent or incoherent. Now, you could probably, some of you see it at an intuitive level, but now with semantics, it's just a few lines of just doing set operations and you give a formal solid proof to that thing. And, and, and hopefully now uh, towards the end, we're gonna see how we can use the same thing to prove monotonicity of logic. Um, you'll see that's pretty straightforward. So getting a hang of semantics and getting a hang of what does a sentence mean as a set of worlds and these three equations, you can do quite a bit. And this will come in handy when we do advanced things later. Let's keep going with this. We finished the properties. Let's talk about relationships and we will be done for the day. So here I'm gonna say relationships. And I also like to use this. We missed it on the previous one, but that is fine. Okay, we'll start with the simpler one. And the simpler one is basically equivalence. So alpha and beta, two sentences, are equivalent. And, and they're basically saying the same thing. What do people suggest? How can we state the definition of equivalence that two things are basically the same? And people are saying it's simply mods of alpha equals mods of beta. And the idea here is, yeah, you know, you are saying what you eliminate. The possibilities that you eliminate is your real content. It's what you're worth. It's what you are communicating as far as knowledge. And if two guys are eliminating the, the exact same things, they're logically equivalent. That notion of uh, mods uh, emphasizes the things that you're true at. I tend to think of them more as what things they eliminate because that is really what knowledge is about, is, is eliminating possibilities. God. So if you use this, for example, okay, let me ask you a question. How many people think that these two sentences are saying the same thing. So this is alpha and this is beta. How many of you think that these are saying the same thing? Okay, so a bunch of people actually are saying yes. Uh, not as many yeses I've seen before, but yes. And uh, this would be an example of equivalence. In fact, in this case, uh, you don't even need to use the tools that we used. You can just unfold to get rid of the implication as we discussed, and you will see that happening. So if you get rid of the implication here, uh, we said this is equal to not alpha A or B, and you get rid of this implication, that would be not not B or not A. These guys cancel, and we got them. Okay, this is easy. We're gonna do uh, two more and then we get to the final one, which is the one that is usually the most interesting and the one that uh, people tend to have uh, issues with. So um, the next one we're gonna have is, uh, ah, and someone is saying this is called contraposition, yes. You may have seen also some of these guys if you did like a critical thinking course in philosophy or um, in, um, psychology, uh, they do go over some of these patterns. Okay, now we wanna talk about alpha um, and beta are mutually exclusive. All right, so what do you guys say? Mutually exclusive, this is a property that comes up in probabilistic reasoning uh, quite a bit, it's uh, pretty important. And I'm getting here that one suggestion is that the mods of alpha equals the mods of beta complement. And then I'm getting another suggestion that says it is the mods of alpha and the mods of beta are empty. They do not intersect. So. Let me see, I'm not getting too many. I got like four so far. Uh, okay, I think the person that mentioned this is now preferring this one. So we're gonna remove it from the vote. Now we have only one candidate. Ah, and I'm seeing yet one more. 
uh, mods of alpha and beta is the empty set. And uh, okay, let's leave it at that. So um, everybody endorsed this one. Um, what do you guys say about this next one? What do you think? Uh, you agree uh, with it? So there is a call with this one and this two, and uh, and people are saying yes, and people are saying they're equivalent. In fact, they are. Remember our rule: we can break this into mods of alpha and intersect mods of beta. And um, so yes, they are indeed equivalent. This is saying. Uh, in a way, the conjunction is inconsistent, right? Uh, so it's also a, a, an intuitive way of uh, referencing what's going on. Bottom line is, um, what is this eliminating? Let me put it this way. If you say um, alpha and beta are mutually ex ex exclusive, we're basically throwing out uh, uh, those uh, worlds at which uh, basically, uh, you know, both hold. You, you know, you could not have them both through in the same uh, world. Very good, very good. Um, and if you look at it, Venn diagram, I'm, I'm using this now here to prepare for the next question. Um, if you look at this alpha and this beta, uh, this is the general relationship between them, right? If you pick an arbitrary alpha, arbitrary beta. And, and we're basically saying that this guy here has no worlds in it. All right, and which means that if you want to draw it in another way, uh, what you're having is uh, they look like this. This is alpha and this is beta. They do not overlap. So this guy has its own worlds, this guy has its own worlds. And uh, one phrasing looked at this set and that set and said that intersection is, and, and the other guys did found a sentence that correspond to this and said it's inconsistent. Let me see, um, if, are we ready for our last? Okay, one, one more thing and then we will exhaustive. <clears throat> so exhaustive, alpha um, and beta are exhaustive. Also comes up in probabilistic reasoning. Intuitively, what I want to say is they cover every possibility, right? And uh, I'm gonna do this one so we can go to the next one. I'm sure you will figure it out pretty easily. Uh, this is basically saying the mods of alpha um, union. Okay, already people wrote it and mods of beta equals the whole set of worlds. Okay, just like we did one and two there, let me call this one. Can someone give me the equivalent of two? If we're gonna do a, a, a style like two above, what would that be in this case? Ah, good. People are saying that would be mods alpha or beta equals uh, the whole set of worlds. So that this junk. Ah, okay. Can someone write this in another phrase differently without mods? So alpha or beta is is valid. Good, 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 good. That's another way of saying it. So alpha or beta, that disjunction is valid. Excellent, excellent. We're ready now to go to the last guy and let me, and then prove monotonicity. Good, we have time for this. Um, okay, I, I like this font, so I'm gonna do, um, let me see, I'm gonna decorate this one because it's important. Now, I'm gonna use the term entailment here. This is like, uh, I don't know if you've heard it, this is what the logicians will typically use. It is effectively talking about implication. It's, um, when I was in college and I first saw that one, I was like, wow, that's fancy, uh, entailment. What we want to write is whether um, alpha entails beta. Okay, and intuitively means, you know, whether if, if you know alpha, then that implies beta. So if you know alpha, you also know beta. Now, we want to show that um, as we did before using the mods relation. So I want someone to write an expression and uh, basically use that expression as a definition for what does it mean for alpha to entail or alpha to imply beta. And it has to be mods. 
Now, you, you, so someone is saying uh, alpha is an element of mods. No, we, we, we need to talk about the mods of alpha and the mods of beta. And, and to simplify it for you, um, it, you have to write an expression that is made of these two ingredients, mods of alpha, mods of beta. I want you to tie them in a certain way that end up referring to implication, all right? And so I am getting a whole bunch of things. The, the two candidates that I'd like to discuss is the following. One of them is saying mods of alpha uh, is a subset of mods of beta, and the other one is saying mods of beta is a subset of the mods of alpha. Let's give these guys numbers. So we're gonna call this one and we're gonna call this two. And what I'd like to do actually, I want you to resolve this. And I want you to resolve it by uh, thinking about um, Venn diagrams. So if we're gonna go ahead and, and draw these two possibilities, so this is one, and let's do two here. And if we're gonna do the first one, the first one says, I want this, right? And uh, so the first one is saying, this is alpha, this is beta. And the other guy is saying, this is beta, this is alpha. And what I want you to do is to think in terms of elimination. Let's agree on one thing here. Let's agree on one thing. We, we already have visualized knowledge as uh, eliminating possibilities. So if I tell you that one guy is uh, eliminating one, three, and seven, okay, this guy is eliminating these. And, and let's call it, um, you know, A. A is eliminating these. And B is eliminating one, three, seven, and eight. Which one is saying more, A or B? Which one is giving us more knowledge? Okay, B is saying more because it's eliminating more. And that's in terms of elimination, but in terms of uh, satisfaction, right? It's gonna be the opposite. So this is larger as far as eliminating, which means smaller as uh, far as satisfaction. So. In this particular case, let's look at one. So here's alpha and here's beta. Beta is eliminating, I know I'm going over this a bit slowly, but it's pretty important. So these blue guys are the guys that beta are eliminating, right? Eliminated those. And then there is the green guys. Now alpha is eliminating the green plus the blue, correct? Beta is only eliminating the blue. Alpha is eliminating the green plus the blue. So alpha is saying more things. And alpha is implying beta in that case. So actually our answer is this guy. And uh, let me do that. So it's this guy and that's our official definition of implication. Now, the models of alpha are smaller or those things that satisfy alpha are a subset of those things. Yes, smaller in this case is better because um, basically smaller worlds that satisfy alpha means more worlds that alpha is eliminating. In this sense, uh, what is the ultimate knowledge? When would alpha be most informed uh, sentence? that is saying as much as can be said, exactly one word someone typed, and that's absolutely right. If it is satisfied by exactly one word, guys, try to visualize it, what does it mean? That means I'm fixing the value of every variable. There is no more any uncertainty. I'm telling you, this variable has this value, and this variable has this value, and this variable has that value. There's no more any uncertainty. I, I'm, I'm pinpointing to one way the world could be and saying this is it, okay? Uh, very good. Let's just do now, we have a, a few minutes. Let's go quickly and, and, sh and, and show uh, monotonicity, which is something that uh, deserved, you know, um, it got a lot of attention uh, for a while. <laughs> there was some of the best minds in AI and mathematics uh, trying to do something about this. But just before I do this quickly, let me show you some notation. 
um, we will use um, um, this. So now we're overloading this guy. Before we put a world here and then we put a sentence. We would use this to mean alpha entails beta, okay? So um, this is pretty common. And now you know what that means. That's the same as this guy. And we will also sometimes use the symbol true to mean a um, sentence that is valid. And we would use the symbol false to mean a sentence that is inconsistent. So, uh, you know, all of these are being overloaded. False is the value of a Boolean variable, but we'll also use it to mean a sentence that is inconsistent. Um, and true is the value of a Boolean variable, but we'll also use it sometimes to mean a sentence that is uh, valid. And let me decorate these for you so that you guys uh, do not forget them. Uh, you're gonna see them quite a bit. Okay, that's quite a decoration. Now I can't see how you can forget this stuff. Okay, let's do the last thing here, which is um, monotonicity, and we will end with that. As I said, monotonicity is something that received quite a bit of attention. And the reason for it is that even though people have been studying logic for centuries, let me see, okay, mono. Even though logic has been uh, studied for centuries by logicians and so on, the, the, the focus on monotonicity and its relation to human reasoning was only brought to light in the late 70s by AI researchers when they realized, wait a minute, uh, there is an aspect of human reasoning that does not correspond to that monotonicity. So monotonicity, if you wanna uh, write it, it simply says the following. If alpha implies, or let's say entails, beta, then alpha and gamma implies, entails, beta, right? And um, that's simply it, that by adding knowledge, in this case, this guy, you cannot retract beliefs. If you think of this is knowledge and, and this knowledge implies this, then by adding another piece of knowledge, I will still believe in this. I'm not gonna retract it. It's, of course, what you see in your proofs, right? When you do a proof, you start with alpha and then you derive beta and then you cannot by adding more axioms to what you know end up invalidating uh, that. So if we want to really, you know, state this using our language, we already know how to write this formally, right? What we have here is this guy is the same as, what did we write? Mods of alpha is a subset of mods of beta, right? So I'm writing this, if, uh, let's separate these. And then I'm doing, then we know how to write the second guy as well. That is mods of alpha and gamma is a subset of mods of beta. All we did is translate this to our formal language. The question now is, can you prove this? Given, given this part, can you show this part? Do you believe it? What do you guys say? Yes, someone said already, yes. Um, what's the insight here? Uh, someone is saying it's an intersection, this guy, right? We already know also that we can take this and say mods alpha intersect mods gamma. Okay, now it's obvious. Someone said transform it into set language and it will be apparent. Thank you. That's the whole point. I'm glad someone is already seeing this. That's, that's the whole point of, you know, what I wanted you to guys see 
And remember when we started with this definition of, oh, let's take a world and see if it satisfies a sentence. And we did that simple example. It looked like so trivial and look how far it got us. And if you do the Venn diagram, it will even uh, look also obvious from, from another angle. And, and I'm glad we were able to get this point through here. So please do invest in this part and, and let it internalize very well because it's gonna help you a lot later. Folks, one thing you should know, we'll end it with this note. In any subject that is uh, you know, intricate, and this would be intricate later, there is always a bunch of uh, secrets, a bunch of core concepts that if you're comfortable with, the rest really follow. So instead of really having to break into everything, you just have to break into a few things. And then you start seeing things. Uh, and, and you'll see a lot of things are just implications of them. And this notion of semantics is one of these things you need to break into. It will make your life much easier later. We're done. Uh, we're gonna end it here. What I'm gonna do is um, just hang around for a little bit in case people have questions and we can make it more of an open uh, format at this point. But we're basically done uh, for the lecture today. And what I covered today is already in your chapter one and we will resume with our discussion on uh, Tuesday. So thank you.